What's up? It's been a while. I almost don't recognize you. Lesson 15 and 16 on nuclear reactions. Uh, this topic in particular is one you don't necessarily know a lot about, but as far as you being an adult who has to make decisions on this kind of thing, you really need to be aware of it. Uh, there are things you've probably heard of, like Chernobyl, a uh, nuclear plant that had an explosion in Russia a while ago, like 70s. Uh, Three Mile Island, our worst nuclear plant disaster in the U.S., where nobody died, but that was the worst, and really no, no new plants have been built since then. Uh, in Japan, the Fukushima nuclear plant had kind of a meltdown thing, uh, or currently China and what they're doing. So, uh, let's see, the Japanese one, when they had their uh, uh, meltdown, this is kind of the projection of all the radiation that we could be experiencing, experiencing here just based on the cloud of the, the fallout. Um, that is all... Uh, fuel from nuclear warheads that they kind of took out of commission that the stuff is still around that somebody has to figure out what to do with. Um, this is Japan. Uh, one of the problems with the nuclear stuff is that if you burn coal and you burn a, hot, a lot of it, that's what it's going to look like. Did I say China or Japan? I meant China if I said Japan. Uh, that's a lovely view of China, those people on their way to work. Uh, so a lot of countries that are developing or are expanding, like China, like their, uh, the amount of energy they use is supposed to just blow up, like double in the next few decades. So if they're getting that from coal, they're going to be making dirty smog. If they get it from uh, nuclear stuff, then it's going to be cleaner, but you have all that waste. And so it's really a tough deal of you know, which one you want when. But you guys are going to have to make decisions on this at some point in your lives, perhaps, so you really need to know what's up. Um, so global energy usage, that's what we talked about with China. Irradiated foods, um, they take food, they expose it to radiation. So you need to know whether to believe these people who say, oh, irradiated foods are bad, poor kids, or these people who say, look at our irradiated foods, because the radiation kills bacteria, and so our food is, uh, I guess, a more reliable supply that won't go bad. Which one do you believe? That'd be a good Nymex project, is kind of look at pros and cons of that. Uh, radon gas. You could have radioactive gas in your homes, so you need to know what's going on with this stuff. All right, some background. Uh, think of this as just the nucleus being a ball of protons and neutrons. If you keep it that simple, it makes it a lot easier. Changing the number of protons makes a new element. So we've talked about going and making gold, kind of a theme here. All you have to do is add protons. But it takes lots of energy to do this, which is good because if it didn't take a lot of energy, like the hydrogens and stuff inside us, it would just turn into a new element and then we would die. So that's not good. Well, I guess it's good that that doesn't happen. All right, so a couple things with this, some vocab. Uh, fission is a nucleus loses part of itself or it breaks down. And so there is lovely, our little card game, fission happening. That's what we use in our, uh, in our uh, nuclear power plants. So you can see the big atom, the big nucleus, is turning into, uh, backwards, it's turning into the other ones. Fusion is a nucleus gains or loses protons. Um, oh, we'll look at that when we look at stars. Okay, so for a good example of, or a good description of this, you can read this lovely story, uh, Brief History of Time, but that looks kind of lame and like from the 80s, so it looks more exciting uh, with this picture. Uh, that's not the, the Michael Jackson you're thinking of who reads it. Basically, all the atoms that we have on Earth came from exploding stars. So in your textbook, page 80 looks at this. There used to be like this whole comic thing where we read, but basically in stars you've got fusion. So you've got two hydrogens that are going together and they're making a new element. So on our card game we had this card. So our sun 
15 million degrees fusion, we can move two spaces. So it basically it's just pushing two of these little atoms together and making a new one and releasing a bunch of energy. If you went to a bigger star, I would say red giant, if you did this, you may have noticed, oh, I get to move more spaces because I fuse with a bigger thing. If you have more energy, you're able to fuse bigger atoms, and so you can get all of these large atoms to get produced. At the small star, it only makes helium. So if you had a star that is so energetic that it explodes, you have a supernova. And so a supernova, you can move ahead a lot more spaces. You're fusing all these giant things together because, again, it takes a lot of energy to put these nuclei together. They don't want to fuse. And that basically is how all of our stuff got here because there was some there were some supernovas exploded they shoot they shot stardust all over they fused these tiny particles together into bigger balls of protons and neutrons that flew around the universe and kind of got into this nice little uh, dust cloud that then formed together into the sun the different planets to be another good dynamics project is to look at the difference between planets and how some of them have denser elements in them, some of them have lighter elements. Alright, so into what we're actually looking at are nuclear reactions. So nuclear reactions are where the nucleus is changed by gaining or losing protons. So anytime we talk about these changes, think of it as what's happening to the nucleus, what's happening to protons and neutrons. So a chemical reaction is different, we can't mix chemicals and change the nucleus. Nuclear equations. So this is a whole new section of your notes here. Nuclear equations, you have to be able to write these. So if we have fission, what was fission? Oh yeah, it was when things split. Uh, in biology you have when bacteria do that. So if it splits, you have one big thing that turns into two little things. That would maybe be a good thing to write down. One big nucleus turns into two little ones. So, the name of these are, you have the parent isotope, the original one, which is a big ball of protons and neutrons, it's going to turn into two smaller ones. Alright, because of the law of conservation of mass, the total mass has to become equal on both sides. So, there must be something with four, so I have a total of 84 here, to equal that there must be something with 10. So I have 10 plus 200 is that. So the key is, every time you see an arrow, write down an equal sign. This side equals that side. Otherwise, you're going to take 210 plus 200, and you're going to put 410 here, and that's really wrong. So element number four is beryllium. So the two daughter isotopes from that the fission of polonium 210 would be these. You could have an equation for fusion, which is the opposite process. Two little nuclei get together and form a bigger one. So, just summing up the masses, summing up the number of protons, and that would be neon 22. That is about the hardest thing you're going to have to do in this little section, is can you add these things? Again, you see an arrow, make it into an equals. Yay, nuclear equations. So with radioactivity, radiation, you're losing pieces off of your nucleus. So we saw this card. You're radioactive. Oh, no. So at uh, alpha decay, you move back two spaces, which meant you lost two protons. We also have beta. You move forward one space, so that means you gain a proton. You can see the picture there is the neutron is what's happening, or what's causing this. So, alpha decay, you lose two protons and two neutrons. So, the result of alpha decay is this side has to equal that. So, what plus two equals six? what plus 4 equals 10. Again, it was very tempting. A lot of you guys were going to put 8 right here. So, remember, that's an equals. 
So, if carbon undergoes alpha decay, it turns into a smaller ele element of beryllium. So if you look at the table, it would be a couple to the left. Beta decay. A neutron turns into a proton and shoots out an energetic electron. So this, the beta particle will come out and shoot at you. So if fluorine undergoes beta decay, you want this side to equal that side. So something minus 1 equals 9, so that would be 10. So 0, well, so that would have to be 22, plus 0 equals 22. Beta decay is particularly tough because you have to figure out what you're doing here. Now, if you looked at this, if you had an element that just said 2 on the bottom and 4 on top, that would be the same as a helium. So sometimes you'll see alpha there, sometimes you'll see helium. If you have a particle that is a negative proton, well, it's the opposite of a proton, and it has zero mass. That would be your, uh, that would be your electron. So sometimes you'll see beta written like that. Gamma radiation. You'll also see they had that little weird that sign. That's a gamma. That is more like an X-ray. Um, so if you got the lead shield, you were protected from that. So that's like when you get x-rays at the dentist, they put the strangely comforting, like a big metal hug that you get, uh, apron thing on you, so that way you're not being irradiated, because basically the radiation, that high energy stuff, can uh, basically shoot out pieces of your DNA, which makes it not work, which makes it potentially lead to uh, making weird proteins that would cause mutations and cancer and that kind of thing. Uh, that's basically what cancer is, is just DNA that's a little bit wrong that just keeps multiplying and multiplying and making wrong cells. That's what the tumor would be. So they have radiation to go in there and zap those cells to kill them, to keep them from spreading some more. Uh, alpha radiation, that's a helium. It's really hard to shoot that into someone, and so uh, the book has a lovely picture. I'm going to find it real quick. Alright, so the book has this lovely picture of basically how scary the radiation is. Alpha is really bad, but your skin protects you from it. Something thin, it can't get through. It's too big of a particle. But if you ate some of it, that would do a lot of damage because then it would be inside your body. Beta can go through a little bit more, but it's a small particle that's not going to be really horrible. But it can do some damage because it can get through uh, minimal uh, protection. Uh, gamma is the, the most damaging because it's able to penetrate basically anything up to lead, but once it's in there, it has to do a lot. You know, you have to be exposed to a lot of it for it really to hurt you. Okay, I have no idea where I was because I got interrupted, but I think I was done. So there are two more topics we'll look at. Chain, uh, chain reactions, what actually happens in a nuclear power plant, and um, we will look at uh, the radioactive carbon dating. So how can you tell how old some fossilized dinosaur bones are? Um, but yeah, so we'll catch you on the flip side.